Right then, folks, um, good morning, wherever you are in the world, or good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name's Philip Newton, and I'll be your presenter for the day. Uh, thank you all for attending, and thank you, obviously, to FX Street hosting these sessions. Um, I've got a little bit of a, an open, open planned uh, session, so if you've got any questions or comments, uh, training related, obviously, uh, you know, please just feel free to type up, and I'll try and address those questions uh, as open and honestly as I can. In the meantime, though, um, we've got, uh, I've got something I do like to go to. I mean, I, the type of analysis I'm going to show you, I absolutely love, absolutely love this analysis. It, it's so simple and I think effective, really, really effective. We, we've covered it a few times in the past, but I think this is the first time it's been recorded. So you can obviously watch it at your own leisure later. Um, first thing, it's going to be a little bit of an interactive session, so I would, would like some feedback. So we're going to be looking at gaps uh, initially. We're going to be looking at gaps. What is a gap? A gap is where price jumps from one price level to another without trading at that level. Typically, we see it on a Monday Monday session, the start the start of the week's trading, and that's when we can often see it. Sometimes see it on uh, news releases as well. So what do you know about gaps? What do you know about gaps in the market? You tell me. What do you know about gaps in the market? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they, they often get filled. I mean, this is one of the, the, the textbook things that I actually do agree with. Um, I don't often agree with most of the stuff in textbooks, but gaps in uh, price, they usually get filled. And in currencies, they typically get filled quite quickly. They typically get filled very, very quickly. And a couple of examples of uh, price not being filled uh, immediately was on the, um, the pound against the Australian dollar. I believe it was around four, either four or six months before it actually filled the gap. Um, when Saddam Hussein was captured a couple of years ago now, the markets uh, gapped over the weekend's trading around about 100 pips. Uh, most of those gaps filled fairly quickly, but the, the gap on dollar yen took around three weeks to eventually fill. So they don't always fill immediately. I want to say immediately, within around 24 hours would be considered quite quick. And again, that would be normal in currencies. So they usually get filled at some point. Yeah, I appreciate there's a lot of, lot of uh, sorry, just reading on the question, it's important if the gap is part of the move or a correction within the trend. Yeah, there's, there's lots of varying degrees of ways of assessing a gap. But let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. So we're looking at gaps. We've got a gap this week, and we've got a gap last week. These solid red lines uh, on the chart of the, the, the previous week's highs and lows, and obviously they've got the current week's highs and lows here. So... We've got coming into this um, this week's session. We've got a gap on the charts just there. Now, last week we also started the session with a gap from Friday's close to Monday's Monday start of the week. So we've got a gap there as well. Now, what I like to do again, this is part, it's not necessarily the gap, but the philosophy behind what we're discussing is a, is effectively a spot the difference exercise. If working on the assumption that if what happened last time repeats, what could you expect to happen the next time your particular observation occurs? And in this context, we're looking at gaps. We're going to look at a few other illustrations as well, but we're basically looking at gaps for the most. So what happened last time the gap developed on last week? Well, say what we see. Price gap down, first of all, just where the cursor is. It tried to rally slightly. It sold off. It drifted sideways. And then spiked up and filled the gap. So we've got this week price gap rallied slightly, sold off. Now what we've not got is the same picture where price drifted sideways for several hours. We've not got that 
uh, that, that sideways motion so far. But what we do have is the next part, which is price just starting to rally up. So we've got that second part there. So effectively, we're looking at a spot to difference. Does that make sense? Very simple concept, spot the difference. Assuming that what happened last time develops again in the future, what could you expect to happen? So we've got a, a, a nice illustration. Price dropped, rise, drops, and then rise to fill the gap. So what have we got? Price gap, rise, drops, and rallying to fill the gap. Again, the only piece of the puzzle that is slightly different is where price went sideways for an extended period of time just there in that circled area. Does that make sense? So what could we expect? Absolutely, my job. Uh, Ma sorry, Manu, oh, my apologies with all these nicknames, it's always hard to pronounce them. So what might happen next? Based on history repeating itself, we've got the gap, the general flow of how price responded on last Monday, happening a little bit faster this time. We've not got the, the, the extended sideways period that we saw for most of Monday. We've got the same shape and flow of movement and a gap fill. Has the gap fill? Not quite, but I think it's close enough. What might happen next? So this is what we're asking ourselves. Assuming that history repeats itself and so far it's looking almost at excluding that sideways transition, excluding that for the moment, it's looking almost exactly the same shape and flow as to what happened last week. So what is the most likely thing to happen when that gap closes? Assuming that history repeats itself. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, basically we've got two chances there. We could see a sell-off after the gap closes and a continuation of the general trend, which is basically what we're looking at. So it, it very is a, a simple piece of analysis. When you've made an observation, has that observation happened again previously? Historically, has it happened once, twice, or several times in the past? Working on the assumption that history repeats itself, what would be the most likely thing to happen? Well, the most likely thing to happen, assuming that history repeats itself, is that the gap will close, and we're close to that doing it now, Historically, previously, now I appreciate this was a little bit news related, but we should quite possibly could see a reversal bar. In this case, uh, we see a shooting star and a, uh, not quite an inside bar, we see a shooting star. That could develop here when that gap fills, because that's what happened. The most recent situation that happened, that's what happened previously. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand the logic? There's nothing more complicated to it than that. Working on the assumption that history repeats itself, what's the most likely thing to happen next? And we can do this on all the crossroads. Let's just take a look at your adults and someone requests doing it. Let's give another quick illustration. We've got, again, an observation in price here. We've got a gap. Price gaps below last week's low. Historically, last week, last Monday, we saw price gap below last week's low, which is there. So what happened? Well, we saw, in, again, we saw quite a quiet Monday last week. So it's not quite the same. It's happening a lot faster. But we've got price gap, slight rally, sell-off. What do we have last week? Gap down, slight rally, and in fairness, a slow and lazy sell-off. But what we do have is the pace of movement. We've got a nice quick move up to fill the gap. And what we have so far on Euro is, again, a nice quick move up to fill the gap. So would it be fair to say that history is repeating itself? You tell me. Everything's looking very similar to last week.
I'm working on the assumption that history repeats itself. What might happen next? What's the most likely thing to happen should history repeat itself? We've got a price move up, spike on that bar, inside bar, inside bar, sell it. So we've got the gap fill. We've not quite got the big spike on the last completed 60 minute bar here, but we do have a small spike. Similar, again, keep in mind that last week this was news related. No news to fill the gap this week. A little bit of a spike on the 60 minute bar. Would it be fair to assume that we might see an inside bar develop next? Assuming that history repeats itself. Would that be a fair comment? Now, this is not exactly a strategy, this is more of an analysis. So, bolt this analysis onto your strategy. Again, this is what I generally like to do when I do these sessions, is rather than give you specific strategy details, which it might be good for one person, but not for the group as a whole, bolt this analysis onto your strategy. If you've got a, stra if you've got a strategy, whatever your strategy is, it doesn't matter. Everything works some of the time. So, if you've got to move an average strategy, and your moving average has crossed the downside, then sell what your strategy says. If you've got uh, an oscillator strategy, vault this onto the front of your oscillator strategy. If you've got a trend line strategy, if you've got a consolidation strategy, whatever your strategy is, your entry method, vault this onto the front of it. How do you enter the trend? You could just go market, you could wait for uh, a reversal bar, you could wait for a variety of things. There's no right or wrong way to trade. You need, what you need to do is to keep that in mind. That's probably the most common thing that I get asked. Where do I enter? Wherever your strategy tells you to enter. If you've researched and done your homework and analysis on your strategy development, then that will give you the answer. So what your question tells me, man, is that you've not got a strategy. You've not got an entry method. So what you need to do is work on an entry method. Typically, all my entries are going to be on a pullback. That, that's generally how I enter. I wait for a small correction in price and then enter past the pullback that develops. That's personally how I enter each and every trade I place. Anyway, so assuming that history repeats itself, what's the most likely thing to happen? Would it be fair to say that we quite possibly could see an inside bar? And should history repeat itself exactly? We could see two inside and very narrow ranging bars before a potential sell off in price. Would that be a fair assumption? So, going back to uh, Manu's question. If we do see those two inside bars, so we've got those two inside bars here. If we see history repeat itself, and we see two inside bars, or even one inside bar in fairness would, uh, would qualify for history repeating itself. Could you use the inside bar low as your trigger level to take action and look to enter below the, um, the inside bar? Would that be a fair comment? A little bit of feedback, folks. A little bit of interaction. Fair comment. And all we're doing is, is chartists, is technical analysis. This is what we do every day. We are looking for history to repeat itself. Whether it's Dow theory, GAN theory, Elliott wave, trend lines, move on averages, MACD, stochastics, any type of oscillator, any type of indicator, any type of analysis. This is what we're doing. We are looking for the same set of circumstances to repeat over and over and over again. But rather than rely on an indicator, we're very simply making an observation in price. Does the bit on the right, the live part of the chart, look like the bit on the left? That's it. My note stops for me, always go past the event that got me into the trade. So the chart will dictate my stop. So let's just say that I use this inside bar to enter, enter below the inside bar, my stop loss for preference would go past the highest points of that move up. 
that's what that's where I would typically place my stops. The always for me go past the events that got me into the trade. So if the event is quite volatile, then I'm going to have a large stop to reflect what's actually happening. And if obviously price is you know quite quiet when a uh, trading opportunity sets up for me, then my stop's going to be quite narrow, and that reflects the volatility of price at that moment. So stop loss uh, management always goes past the events that got me into the trade, whatever strategy or setup that you're using. So we look at this in, gap, in uh, the context of gaps. We're looking at potentially the same things happening. Now, given the fact that we're going into the, the, the typically quite UK lunchtime period, it's probably not a fair, sorry, it's probably a fair, yeah, a, a fair assumption that we will definitely see at least one inside bar or one narrow ranging bar. The next two hours during the UK day, they're typically very, very quiet. Not a lot usually happens. So it might be fair to assume that we quite possibly will see a narrow ranging or an inside bar to develop over the next two hours. We've got the gap filled. We've granted a small spike, so it would be fair to assume that that would quite possibly be a likely scenario. What happened next? So again, what could you expect? So we've got the what needs to happen, what might happen next, and what could you anticipate from uh, such uh, history, such a history of people. So now I'm looking at the next part of the chart, the squared area. What could I expect? I could expect price to make a new low for the day. So making a new low for the day, assuming that price sells off, there's a potential for around about 100 pip movements. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand? Again, does everyone want to understand the logic? All I'm doing is looking for history to repeat itself and working on the assumption that should history repeat itself, what might happen next, should that circled area, the, the, the what might happen next, after that, what could you expect, assuming that history repeats itself? This is all we're doing, but we're using price to determine our expectation of the most likely scenario, again, assuming that history repeats itself. Again, we can take this to any chart, any time frame uh, on the chart. So let's uh, do something slightly different. I do spend most of my time on the lower time frames. But let's take a look at, let's take a look at some of the larger time frames. We can take this same logic, the same philosophy, if you like, onto any time frame, onto any chart. So what's the first thing that, that jumps out at you? Is there any point on the right-hand side of the chart? So let's just say past to the right of that vertical line. We're looking at a weekly chart, so we can look a little bit further back. So is there any point on the right-hand side of the chart? that looks similar in shape to the left-hand side of the chart. So all we're doing is trying to spot the difference. And if we can see something that looks very similar, then we can start work, start looking for further examples. And again, assuming that history repeats itself. So what jumps out of the chart at me firstly is this consolidation here. We've got a little bit of a squeeze in price followed by a nice reasonable sell. We've got what, what's going on right now? Price squeezing, consolidating, directionless. So these two bits of the chart look similar. And if so, is there any other time in history where price has developed in a similar fashion? Can we all see these points that have marked off on the chart? There's a couple of uh, missed here. Let's get these on.
Now, can everyone see this? All we've done is identified a point on the live part of the chart that looks very similar to the historical chart that we've got. So working on the assumption that history repeats itself. History is going to be everything to the left of this vertical line that I've just placed. Should history repeat itself? What is the most likely thing to happen? You tell me. What's the most likely thing to happen should history repeat itself? Sam seems that fairly reasonable. Certainly looking at the most recent, most recent uh, illustration. Okay? We've, let's analyze the pattern. The move up into the circled area that we've got was up, the move out was down. The move into the most recent circled area was up, the most likely direction would be down, just comparing these two most recent circled areas, the live one and the last completed one. Now let's compare the others. The move into this first circled area where the cursor is was up, the move out was up. The move into the second circled area was up. The most, uh, the move out was down. The move into the third was down. The move out was up. The move into it was up. Out of it was up. Into it was up. Out of it was up. Move into it was down. Move out of it was down. Okay? So, would it be fair to say that, just ballparking this, around 60% of what we've looked at, they acted as a continuation, and about 40% acted as a, acted as a reversal. With that, again, just ballparking it, I appreciate the time, due to the time, we, probably, we would go into this in more detail. But would it be fair to say, just ballparking the figure, keeping it nice and loose, about 60% acted as a continuation, 40% acted as a reversal. Would that be a fair statement? So that gives us two possibilities. Around 60% of the time, yeah, around, to be fair, this actually lines up with my, yeah, with long-term analysis that I've actually done. Generally speaking, just for reference, the consolidation, the move into the consolidation, whatever the name of it is, doesn't matter. But generally speaking, the move into the consolidation around 60% of the time dictates the move out of the consolidation. Around 40% of the time, the move into the consolidation is the opposite. So 60% is a continuation, 40% it would act as a reversal. That generally lines up with a more detailed analysis that have done in the past. Taking the most recent illustration into account, so this one where the cursor was here, the move into it was up, consolidation down. That's the most recent history. And I, I, for preference, I'd like to give it more weighting towards the most recent example. The continuation patterns happened quite a long time ago, going back into 2004, 5, 2006. The most recent example, obviously, is a reversal pattern. However, I would like to give it a little bit of weighting towards that. And that would be my favoured scenario. Prices moved up into a consolidation that previously known, it's almost exactly the same location. And it's almost exactly the same thing repeating itself. So what would be the most likely scenario? You've got two possibilities. Again, a continuation to the upside or a reversal to the downside. In fairness, that's not that imaginative, it's either going to go up or down, but we've got something to fall back on. Around 60% of the time it would possibly go up. Around 40% uh, of the time it would go down. Now would it be fair to assume, fair to also assume that it price has already tipped its hat slightly and it's already started to move away from this previously known 
or sorry, this consolidation has already started to move away. Would that be fair to say that it's already started to break out of this pattern and perhaps tip its hat that down is the most likely movement? Again, would that be a fair statement? Again, all we're doing is observing the chart. We're looking at history repeating itself. We're making some assumptions based on what happens historically to figure out what happens or what might happen again in the future. So looking at things in a little bit more detail, you can see the price has started to move away from this previous consolidation. And again, it's looking like history might repeat itself. So let's look at history repeating itself. Let's see if we can try and figure out what might happen. We've got price We've got price uh, selling off. Let me just make this uh, thicker so we can see it. Okay, so we've got price selling off. We've got price, it rallied slightly. Yeah. And then we've got price selling off again. Now, if we look here, I'm not going to draw it on just for time because I'm running out of time, but we've got that same sell-off. Sell-off, slight rally, sell-off. Yeah, can we see that? This, just where the cursor is. We've got the sell-off, slight rally, sell-off. Same pattern. Yeah? What happened next? Rally. What happened next on the live pattern? Rally. What have we got next? Sell-off. Not quite reaching the low of the pattern. What have we got now? Sell off, not quite reaching the low of the pattern. Yeah? So all we're doing is we're playing spot the difference. So what might happen next? This is a weekly chart. What we could see is one, two, uh, three weeks might retrace. Where could it come up to? Historically, it came back up to that previous swing low here. So where could price get? Let's just zoom in slightly. Where could price get to? Should, should history, again, should history repeat itself? We've got the possibility that price could come back up to around about 16100. So we've got the sell-off. So there's the sell off there. So that's the part we're looking at now. So this is the, the this last line down here, that's the basically where the live part of the chart is. So we've got the same shape of pattern developing and we're pretty much up to where the live part live price is developing. We're up to the same point of the chart. Does this make sense? Appreciate it might seem a little bit out there, but all we're doing is we're making observations in price activity. We've got a down, slight rally, sell-off, big rally, sell-off. We've got exactly the same pattern developing. Interestingly, it's exactly the same location. So it would be fair to assume that history will repeat itself. We've got the same down, rally, down again, rally, and again, another sell-off. We're up to pretty much the same point on the chart that we can see historically. Where these two vertical lines are, this is the point of the chart we're in. So what might happen next? We're going to look at this circled area here, where the cursor is. Assuming that history repeats itself, we might see one, two, three weeks of price oscillating back and forth between its current location and 16100. Why 16100? Because historically, the pattern came back up to this, just, you, you can't just, I'm just move that away. Historically, price came back up to that swing low there, just where the cursor is. We've got a swing low here, which is at 6100. So again, should history repeat itself, that's where price could quite possibly retrace back to. Should that happen, 
what's the next most likely thing to happen? We could see a very interesting sell-off. And if history repeats itself, where could price get to? Assuming we see a reset to 16100, just taken, I've just measured the box down, we could be looking at a move down to 14500. Does this analysis make sense, folks? Does everyone understand the logic? Please type up, and is there any questions? Why would history repeat itself? It does. You could look, you look through history. The same things happen over and over and over again. If this financial meltdown that we've currently experienced, it's happened before. It will happen again. It happened in Rome. It's not a new thing to happen. Prices repeat themselves. History repeats itself. Because human nature doesn't, has, doesn't evolve in the same way. The same group of people have the same mentality that will take the same course of action and history will repeat itself. A bit of a lewd example might be when a beautiful girl walks into a bar, every male head turns and looks at her. It's inherent in human behavior. We are not necessarily analyzing price activity. We are analyzing human behavior, human psychology, crowd psychology. The same thing happens over and over and over again. We've seen the same bubbles occur over and over again in different instruments. We've seen the tech bubble, the oil bubble. We've seen the um, uh, 80s, again, 80s bull market, capitalism at its peak. We've seen tulip mania, the South Sea bubble. These things happen and repeat over and over and over again. At the moment, we've got gold through, going through the roof. So why, why will history repeat itself? because we are humans. And at the same time, that's what's driving the markets. A crowd of people deciding to take a course of action. That's what drives the markets. So, assuming that history repeats itself, I would forecast a slight retracement, potentially up to 16100, should that, should that happen, it's got to be conditional. Should that happen and history does repeat itself, we could quite easily be looking at the sell-off down to around about 140, around 14400. So basically this, quite interesting, this low here. Which interestingly, is not a million miles away from where it got to previously. Any questions, folks? Any questions on this? It's a very simple concept. It can be summed up in a sentence. Does the bit on the right look like the bit on the left? If it does, what will be the most likely thing to happen? Uh, how do I do? I take into account the fundamental aspect, Joe. I'm not honestly too concerned about fundamentals. I personally believe that's all on the chart. Again, if, there's, if that crowd of people who have the money and the influence to move the markets, they're already looking at these things. These are people who are far cleverer than me. Uh, I'm honestly not too concerned about the fundamentals. Uh, it, it, it's all priced in. It's all factored in. And if it's not, it will be eventually. So I'm not honestly concerned about fundamental analysis. I do appreciate the importance of it, but I personally don't bother with it. 120 on euro. Uh, yeah, I think 120 is available on euro. Let's just go to euro dollar. I think, uh, I think personally it will get there. Now, the big question, the real question, is not whether it will get to 120. It's when it will get to 120. Yeah, but to be fair, we've got that same pattern. Look at this, look at this. Again, same thing. We're on the weekly chart in euro. History repeating itself. What jumps off the chart? What indeed jumps off the chart? The same type of squeezing price that we've seen before a big move. 
So you tell me that history doesn't repeat. <laughs> Squeeze, big move. So the move in was up, consolidation up. The move in was up, consolidation down. The move in was up, consolidation down. We've got, I think this is looking, ex you know, we've got this peak here looking like it did just prior to that financial meltdown. There's the big sell-off there. I'm not saying that we're going to see the same proportion there. There's obviously some major factors why this happens. Major factors. That's already priced in. Um, and quite easily we could see, well, to be fair, I mean, I'm, for, I'm Friday. I forecasted uh, we'd actually get to 135 on Friday um, in my own trading room. Didn't quite get there, but you know, not a million miles away for a single day move. Where's the next stopping point? Where's the next stopping point? Next stopping point, quite logically, 130. Just looking at the previous stall points here. The next stopping point, just looking around, just above 125 there. 120 is the ultimate low. So you've got a few stopping points. I don't think it's going to get go in a straight line unless something fundamental significantly changes the market view. Um, it probably won't get in a straight line there. But we've got three stopping points here. We get through 135, I've got no reason not to think it's going to 130. No reason whatsoever. We get through 130, nothing to stop it to 125. And if 125 goes, it will be in complete freefall to 120. I do think it will get there uh, between the 120, 125 level. I personally think that the real question is when it will get there. Uh, can we sell euro as a question? Of course you can. You can sell it wherever you want. You can buy it as well if you want to. I think we're going to see some retracement first. Again, let's look for history to repeat itself. Well, what happens? Well, we're looking at this just th this big sell-off. Appreciate this with the financial meltdown. Now, what happened previously? We've got, um, again, a fairly reasonable sell-off. Fairly reasonable sell-off. We saw, uh, as the price moved away, one, two, three weeks. We've got one, two. This is the third week. We might see a third week of the sell-off before seeing, again, just looking for history to repeat itself. There's the sell-off. What happened after three weeks of that sell-off? Price just paused briefly. A little bit of a rally, maybe. Again, just looking for it to happen again. Where did that happen? Look left across the chart. It happened at a previously known stall point. So, again, look at the live part of the chart. Price, look, prices one, two, we're into the third week. Look left across the chart, a previously known stall point. This isn't rocket science, folks. There's a good chance price will stall and pause at this location. Really good chance. everyone understand this? I mean, all we're doing is making, I'm not saying anything that you can't do for yourself, folks. All I'm doing is saying what I see. That is all I'm doing. It's a very simple process. Say what you see. That's all analysis is. And because of that observation, historically, I can work on the assumption that the same thing or a similar thing will happen again in the future. Yeah, John, I appreciate the comments. If the markets are completely cyclical, I appreciate that. It's not always going to happen exactly the same way. That's, that's the, the, the catch-22. So all I'm looking for is a rough, similar approximation that it looks similar. Listen to it. It looks similar to what, it ha to what happened last time. Not exactly the same. Nothing will happen exactly the same. But as long as it looks close enough, that's all I'm interested in. So what have we got here? Big consolidation. The sell-off's already started. Look at the financial meltdown here, just where the cursor is, back in 2008. Consolidation, big sell-off. Where did it pause? Not unsurprisingly, where price paused previously. Where are we now? It's where price paused previously. So again, it's not rocket time. This is where price will probably pause. Before the next move down. So we've had a pause previously. You might see price pause here for a week, or this, as we're looking at the weekly chart. This week, price might just oscillate back and forth. We're also anticipating that gap fill. 
before potentially seeing the next move down. Now, where's the next move going to da go? Next move down going to get to? Well, the next logical place is at 130. Big psychological round number. And guess what? It's a previously known stall point. What happens historically? Just zoom in. What happened historically? Price got down to the next logical stopping point and rallies. It rides back to that previously known stall point. So if price gets down to 130, you start to build scenarios. You start to build scenarios. If price gets down to 130, there's a good chance price would come back, retest 135 before seeing the move, the big move potentially down to you know 125, 120 and beyond. At Manic, you can do the same thing on a one hour chart. Let's do it very quickly. Same thing on a one hour chart. All we're doing is playing spot the difference. We've all, to be fair, we've already we started off on the one hour chart. What did we do? We identified a gap. Let me just put the weeks highs and lows on. There's the weeks highs and lows. We identified a gap. Yeah? We identified a gap. Gap down, lazy move, spike up, sell off. What's happened? Gap down, lazy move down, rally up, and we've got the gap still. We're speculating on an inside bar developing because that's what happened last time. And should history repeat itself with, with 10 minutes to go before this 60 minute bar's completion? We've already speculated on this 60 minute bar being an inside bar. Why? Because that's what happened last time. Nothing more complicated to it than that. Spot the difference. Assuming that what happened last time develops again in real time on the hard right edge of the chart, what could we expect? We've already speculated on at least one inside bar. That looks like it will happen. Assuming that it does happen, again with 10 minutes to go, that looks like a realistic possibility. Could we expect a second inside bar before seeing a sell-off. That sell-off to retest the, the lows could take us down to 135. That's what happened last time. It's a fair chance that could happen again in the future. And there's a fair chance that could happen today. So it's difficult to convert a long-term analysis. Well, you don't have to do the long-term analysis. You can do this on any time frame you want. Looking for history to repeat itself. And should history repeat itself, you can start to build scenarios that will dictate your course of action as a trader. You can bolt this analysis onto your entry method. So before you physically place a trade, you might want to do this type of analysis. There are, well, this is my most likely scenario. Should that inside bar happen? After the inside bar, whatever your strategy is, let's just set to move an average crossover. If your strategy gives you a sell signal, with a crossover, move an average crossover entry setup, trade on. That's your, that's your analysis done. And you're anticipating 150%. Because, should history repeat itself, that's the most likely thing to happen. It's a very simple concept. Again, as mentioned, it can be summed up in a sentence. Assuming that history repeats itself, what's the most likely thing to happen? It's not magic, it's not mystical, it's not rocket science. You are just very simply making observations in price. Based on those observations, you are looking for history to repeat itself. As a result of that history repeating itself, you can start to formulate a plan of action that will cause you to, hit, that will cause you to take action in your own trading. And more importantly, to have confidence in that uh, action that you, uh, that you might want to take. I'm personally looking for shorts on Euro. I'm waiting for shorts to set up. Pretty much all based around this type of analysis. And I'm looking for that to happen today. Right, folks, I think that's me done. I've slightly overrun my uh, allotted time. Um, is there any final questions or comments? And if not, thank you all very much for listening. My name's Philip Newton. You've been fantastic. And I will see you uh, next time.